Hey guys, it's John P. with Geek Beat. We've got an unusual little show for you today because I'm going to teach you how to sharpen all your knives using the Chef's Choice Edge Select 120 knife sharpener. Now, let me tell you, uh, a few, like a couple of months ago, we were at the big uh, National Restaurant Association show and I showed you guys a knife sharpener that was like $400. It worked great but it was quite expensive and several of you asked me to see if we could find something more cost effective that would do just as good of a job. So I reached out to our friends over at Chef's Choice. They sent me this one for review and it does a fine job. So I wanna show it to you. And before we do, I wanna tell you, uh, one, one thing that I'm really impressed about is if you go on Amazon for this product, it's got 225 reviews with four and a half stars. Now that's a big deal, as I'm sure you guys know. It's hard to have a product that's that beloved by that many people. So let's get right into how this thing works. First of all, there are, if you look closely, there are three different uh, kind of bays here for doing sharpening. One, two, three, they're labeled. And the first one has a little black plastic guard on it. This thing pretty much stays on at all times. And that's because uh, it's to remind you that you only want to use this when your knives are extremely dull. Otherwise, you kind of ruin the uh, edge that you've got. So don't be, don't be using this uh, except in dire cases. Uh, number two here is going to really put uh, re reshape an edge for your knife and number three is going to give it kind of a fine polish. So uh, we're going to try doing doing things with all three of them. I'm going to show you some of the difference. But before we get started, I've got four different knives here we can take a look at. This is literally a 99 cent cheap plastic kind of Walmart special. Um, we have my $100 uh, pocket knife made by Benchmade. We have a VG10 which is a very hard Japanese steel Damascus kitchen knife and then we've got like a $40 Dexter butcher knife. Now we're not going to sharpen all of them but I'm going to give you the concepts because it'll work across all of them. The first thing we want to do is check and see kind of relatively how sharp or dull are the blades and a good way of doing that is with just a sheet of paper. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and take a knife and drag it through and see if we can cut it. Um, this one's pretty sharp. You can see it's it's carving through. It's kind of uh, ripping the paper at the end and it's sticking a little bit. So it's relatively sharp, but we want to make that one a little sharper. So here's a uh, another kitchen knife. Let's see what this is doing. That one's going through even better. So it's fairly sharp, but you see it's dragging at the end. Let's try my pocket knife. Oh, that's not good at all. I mean, I can barely... I can barely get it through there. And then the little cheap one here, it's a little rough, but it's it's kind of sticking, so that's not good. What we want is, we want it to go through the paper like it was butter. We should be able to just chop it like a, like a sushi chef would. So, let's try the big one, because these are always the most fun. First thing you're gonna do with this machine is just turn it on. Now, listen to it. It just kind of hums along, all right? It's not real loud, it's just humming along. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take uh, this knife and there's two different sides here. I like this because it sets a particular edge and then you don't have to worry about it. We're gonna set it down in this groove and then pull it back at about that speed. Uh, it should take, for a blade this size, it should probably take about five or six seconds to pull all the way through. So we're gonna make one pass from this side. And notice how I turned the blade this way as we got to the end, so that I try and keep it uh, in contact all the way to the tip. We don't want just this part sharp, we want the whole thing sharp. So now we're going to put it in on the other side and pull it through like that. Okay, now typically what you're going to do 
is you're gonna start with one side. You're gonna make two or three passes, and then you're gonna run your fingers along the blade this way. Never, never like this. This will cut you. You're gonna start up here on the flat part and run across the blade this way. And what you're trying to do is feel what's called a burr. When we make a few passes on one side, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna make about two or three passes this way. One. Two. Three. Okay. What's happened is there's a little spinning wheel in there that is grinding against the blade on this side. So now when I feel the opposite side, I can feel a little ridge that is kind of where the metal is bent over a bit. And as I run my fingers this way, I feel that edge. That's called a burr. And I'm looking for it to be consistent across the entire edge. So in this case, I do have a burr. It runs the entire length. Now I'll work on the other side. So we'll do like three passes on that side as well. Okay, so now I'm going to check it, and again, I have a burr all along that edge. It's very hard to see because it's tiny, but definitely you'll feel it, okay? So now we're going to go to the third setting, which is a much finer and a flexible wheel, and what we're looking to do now is take the burr off. The fact that we have a burr means that we have a point that is very sharp and it's so sharp, there's a little fine piece at the end which is curling over one way or the other way. What we want to do is remove that part that sticks up, that curls over, but leave that fine edge. And that's what we're going to do with this. So now we're going to make a few passes and you're going to notice it actually sounds different with this particular disc. it sounds kind of much quieter. So I made one pass and the burr is almost gone, but I'm gonna make another one here. And this is really polishing and finishing that edge to make it nice and sharp. Now I'm gonna do the other side. The other thing that's great, like I said before, is since this machine has these two V's, you're always going to insert the knife at the exact same angle. You can't mess it up. If we were sharpening it at this angle, then at this angle, then at this angle, we wouldn't be getting a consistent edge. So really all I did with this knife was I made a total of six passes on number two. I made a total of like three or four passes on number three. And now let's check it to see how we do. That is a whole different level of sharpness, people. Oops, getting a little close to my fingers there, made me nervous. That's what we're looking for in a knife, okay? So that's how you do it with the big one. Let's take a look at the little one and let's pretend that this one is really, really dull. So what we wanna do is we're gonna recreate an edge. We're gonna use this number one position, which is a diamond uh, kind of dust uh, studded wheel, which is very abrasive. You're gonna sat here, it even sounds loud. So I'm gonna put it in here and pull it through. You hear how loud it is. And I can instantaneously feel a big burr on that edge. So it's it's gonna it's really creating a new edge for it. It's removing a lot of material. But it also makes it pretty dull. So it's setting the proper angle, but it's also gonna be very rough. Thank you.
Okay, I've got a big burr on that. If we try and see how sharp it is now, let's see here. It's very, it, it's hard to pull through. It's very just jagged. It doesn't work very well. So let's step it up to a smoother, a smoother finish now. We'll use number two. Did three passes on that side. And now on the opposite side, I feel there is a burr on the edge. So now we'll do the other side. Okay, now I'm gonna feel it. And indeed there's a burr there. So let's go to the final polishing stage. See if we can get rid of that burr. Now it feels really smooth as I run my fingers across it. Again, not along the edge that's gonna cut you, but going this way is pretty safe. Okay, let's try another piece of paper here. Now remember, that's a $99, a 99 cent Walmart knife. So you can make any knife really sharp. Now the advantages you would have with a high quality knife like this, a Damascus VG uh, series steel, is when we sharpen this knife, it's gonna stay sharp a lot longer because the steel is very hard. That also means it takes longer to sharpen the knife. So I'll probably, because this is really soft, it only took maybe six passes, this one might take 12 or 15 passes. You might have to make a lot more passes to do the same sharpening with. And uh, so I'm not gonna sharpen that one right now, but you'll notice also we can do the same thing even with a little pocket knife. I was having problems with this one before. We're just gonna make a couple of passes through. We'll start with number two here. And I'm feeling to see, do I have a burr? Actually, I don't. This is also a much harder steel, so I need to make a few more passes. It's gonna take longer when it's a hard, high quality steel. Another thing to consider, especially the first time you use this machine on your knife, is whatever angle the blade has coming from the factory may be a different angle than this is setting when we go at these two different angles. For example, this could be a 17 degree angle and this could have come from the factory at 20 or 15. In that case, it's gonna take a lot of passes on this number two to get it kind of reshaped to that point. So when, it, when that happens, start off the first time you sharpen a knife, use the number one, the really aggressive one, to set a brand new angle for the bevel for the edge, grind it all the way to that one, and then from then on, you should only have to use number two and number three to continue polishing it. So I've got kind of, an, I've got kind of a burr working on that side. We'll make a few passes on this side. Check it. Oh yeah, now I definitely have a burr. So now we're gonna polish it up, remove that burr. It even sounds smoother.
Okay, and let's see how we did here. So you know it's really sharp when you can make very, very thin little pieces, thin little slices. So that's it guys. I would give this thing a big honking thumbs up. It's really well worth it. Like I said, it's on Amazon for 140 bucks. You're not going to be able to find anything that's going to make this kind of a quality edge for less money and less effort. So if you guys enjoyed the review, do two things. Number one, give us a thumbs up on YouTube. And number two, go pick yourself up a Chef's Choice Edge Select 120. That's it for this episode of Geek Beat. See you guys later.